Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I wanted to take a look at my use of Google Classroom. Uh, Classroom has had a couple updates since I last used it. Um, a lot of things that sort of streamlined it, and for the most part, it helped me keep content in the classroom clean, meaning ha uh, not having too much junk uh, in the stream for my classroom. I use Google Classroom for most, pretty much all of my classes now. Um, my institution has a learning management system, an LMS that they use. Um, I choose not to use that. I don't use it because um, I'm in higher ed and I work with teachers. I think that it's uh, more beneficial for my students if I use free online tools that they will be able to use in their classroom. Um, so they will be a student in my classroom. They'll see my use of technology in and out of my technology classes. They'll see what I'm doing. And they'll think about how they can use those tools in their classroom with their students. Um, so I've had a lot of different ways that I've made this work over the last couple of years. Google Classroom is what I'm currently using. Uh, I wanted to give you a little bit of a look as to how I use it and to give you some tips and tricks on how to do it. So typically when a class starts, um, the nice thing is that students are already pre-populated in the regular online class that the institution runs. And this is going to happen in K-12, it's going to happen in higher ed, um, but the, the school, the university, the, they'll automatically put the kids into that online class. So this is a little bit more work for me. I have to create the class and move my students over. So what I'll typically do is before the class begins, I'll put a note telling students, hey, go over to Google Classroom, uh, sign in with your institutional credentials, and you'll have to search for my class. So I'm going to take a look at how that happens. Um, so if I bring them over to Google Classroom, um, I'm signed in now. Uh, you can see that uh, you know when I go to Classroom, I click over here, you'll see my institutional sign-in. Um, my personal Gmail account is not signed in at this point. So I'm in my institutional address and you can see here I had three courses this semester and I have an old course with a colleague that I use to, to pay attention to uh, things that, that, that we create together. So I can go in here and I can see the calendar across courses, my to-do list, which I don't really use at all at this point. Um, what's also important for me over here is my archived classes. So you can see all the classes that I've used this for over the last year and a half, two years. Um, and what's nice is I can go in and quickly click in, see the announcement I used, or keep track of different rubrics that I've shared out. And it's an easy way for me to pay attention to what exactly am I supposed to be sharing at this point. So when you're signed in, what you're going to want to do is you're going to uh, if you've never used it before and you're using your institutional address, you'll sign in, you have nothing here. Um, you're going to go up here and click on uh, create or join a class. So if you're the instructor and you're starting this off for the first time, you're going to go to create class. You can call this thing anything that you want it to be. So I'm going to say uh, language and literacy. Um, I'm going to call this section one. And I'm going to say ELA education. And I'm going to say this is in room 214. So if I hit create, it's going to take a little bit of time, go up to the internets, figure out how much space I have, how many more classes I can start up. So now it's going to start up the class for me. So this is pretty much right out of the box. I haven't done anything. Um, I can see that it added a banner for me right off the bat. Um, the first thing that I suggest doing is changing this to fit the look or the aesthetic that you're looking for. I think that the look means something and it matters. Um, very easily you can go in and you can go to select theme. And I can pick a number one of the, you know, a number of the themes that they have built in, or I can pick a pattern. Typically I'll pick a pattern. So if I pick this blue one and select it as a class theme, what you'll notice that doesn't really help out as much, but the background changes and the color of the, the website of the classroom changes a little bit. So if I go to the jelly beans, I can select that and everyone is pretty much staying with that same stock blue for some reason. Um, so what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to change the overall look. There we go. Um, so you can see I can change the background. Um, and it will change the overall look of the class. And it's nice. 
It's helpful if you have a couple classes in the semester, you want to keep them different. Um, so if I go back to my classes for the semester, I can see this is my purple class. It's a very, when things get crazy in the middle of the semester, it's definitely an easy way to keep track of um, your different classes. What you can also do is you can upload a photo. Um, so in the past, what I've done is I've played a little bit. I love using Canva to create backgrounds that are meaningful but what I've noticed is with Canva the backgrounds I'll put a little bit of text on it it doesn't show up well here in the background for classroom and it doesn't show well in the classes what I have found and I've been playing with recently is if you go to select theme actually check that if I go to upload photo um, you can upload a photo you can go to unsplash or Flickr and find a Creative Commons license banner you can create your own and crop from it so if I say select a photo uh, let's see what I have here um, I have this is from unsplash so we'll upload the photo and I can crop this so I can pick exactly the part of the photo that I want to use and hit select class theme and it will crop it for me. It looks pretty nice. Changed it to a different color. Uh, it's going to change the look on the outside. But what's also super cool is if I go to upload photo, and I just found this out in the last couple days, if I select another photo, it will also let you use animated GIFs. So if I go in, I've already downloaded a GIF earlier, and I can grab this thing and I can basically position it where I want it and hit select class theme and so what's cool is you can get a little bit of an animation or animated wallpaper behind the scenes I found that it's it's helpful not to have a lot of movement um, you know it's a little bit of a distraction but if you have a little bit of movement there then it's a little bit of interest to students they're a little bit intrigued um, to figure out how you did that um, so while I'm over here I can go over to about um, I can see the section, I can see the class code, this is going to be very important in a minute. Um, I can see all of the information that I've already added, and if I need to change that information, which I regularly have to do because I mess it up the first time, I can go to class details, change all of this, give a bit of a description, class code, change the streaming settings, I pretty much leave this all the way that it's currently set up, uh, that Google sets it up for me. Part of the reason is I want my students to be able to post and comment on materials here in the classroom. You may not want to. You may want to shut that off so that you control everything. It's up to you and your purposes. Um, I also, before I add any real content to this thing, um, I'll get a look at everything that's out here. So the, the way that classroom is lined up is you have a general stream for information everything that you add to the class shows up in the stream so if you add assignments if you add announcements if you add links anything that you share out with students or students share out with each other that pop that it populates in the stream um, then there's a separate section for classwork and we're going to talk a little bit about classwork and how to organize classwork um, it's definitely important to chunk content to make it easier to organize and i'll talk a little bit more about why how and why to do that um, while we're on classwork, um, you can take a peek, and this is just a little holder. We'll let you know what Google Classroom is looking for you to do. But if I go to create, I can add in an assignment, a quiz, a question, uh, material. This is a little bit newer. Material is like a link to a syllabus or a link to uh, reference materials. I can reuse and repopulate posts. So if you have a recurring quiz that you want to add, um, and then topics are sort of like holding places or headings for your different content that you add. One of the other things that's also nice is they will use Google Calendar. So any assignments that you put in that have a due date will populate to a class calendar that students can pay attention to and subscribe to. Um, that's really nice because it shows up. Uh, they can add it to their calendars to pay uh, attention to assignments. It shows up on my calendar, so I know what's coming up that day. Um, and last but not least, one of the other things that's important to note here is Google Classroom plays really nicely with Google Docs and Google Drive. Um, so in my class, my work, 99% of the work that students do is uh, 
completed and turned in and assigned and I return back to students all in Google Docs. Uh, I don't use Microsoft PowerPoint, I don't use Office, I don't use Word. So pretty much everything I do is in Google Drive and Google Docs. So that works really well for Classroom. If you're not using that, um, you might have a little bit steeper of a learning curve. I don't have that issue. Um, so the reason why I'm saying all that is as students submit materials, it's automatically going to populate things in Google Drive. This is a little bit unnerving for people. Google Classroom will create a Drive folder for you and it will organize student work in the folder. So what's nice is when a student submits work to you, it is a Google Doc. Um, it can be other things, but if it's a Google Doc, it'll drop it into a folder for you. It'll keep it organized. And when that you give feedback, when you assess this work, it'll save those copies and all of that work in Google Drive. Um, so that's really, really nice. The, the challenge is if you're one uh, if you're one of those people that keeps their drive folders really really organized and you have a certain hierarchy or a system for that the way Google Drive organizes it I mean the way the classroom organizes it and you organize it might not be the same thing so you might have a problem with that the other challenge that I've had is when students submit work uh, Google Classroom and Google Drive pretty much takes away ownership of the work from the student and it gives it to me. And so students can see the work, they can see what I'm doing in it and see if I've assessed it yet, but it takes away ownership and that is a challenge for some students. So if they want to like resubmit, I have to release it, they get it back, they fix it and then send it back to me. Um, so that is also a bit unnerving for some students and for some people that aren't uh, super savvy with Google Docs. So while I'm here in Classroom, a couple of things, I can create that assignment. An assignment, you're going to give it a title. Uh, you're going to basically make sure it's in this section. Uh, you're going to make sure that it's for all students or specific students. Give it a title, give some instructions if needed. Um, you can give it a point scale, you can give it a due date. So I can pick on the calendar that this is going to be due on Monday uh, at you know 1 p.m. And so I can say, OK, when you enter the classroom, this is due uh, right at one o'clock when we start. And then also there is an opportunity to, to create topics or tags. So when I give assignments, I typically like to chunk these things and I'm going to say, OK, this is all for module one. So I'm going to say this is assignment one. And this is uh, please review and complete. And I'm going to say, OK, this is due in the 14th at one o'clock. This is for module one and this is due. This is for 10 points. Um, I can also attach a file. I can give a link out to a website. I can uh, include a YouTube clip either with the URL or the search. I will frequently, you know, give them a YouTube clip uh, that explains my expectations or one of these videos that I record. Um, or I'll give YouTube clips uh, as, a, as a prompt before they start their materials. So say go watch the video. But then also what I'll do is I'll share a lot of Google Docs. So if I click on that, it will link over to other materials. So I can say, okay, where is the unit plan template? So I can go to my unit plan template and I can add that to that and say okay i want you to be able to share the file or make a copy or students edit the file so typically what i'll do is if they're just looking at it i'll say students can view file most times if it's a template it's something that i want them to take the doc and sort of make their own copy and then edit i'll say make a copy for each student when the student opens it up it's going to take that document save it as a copy over in their Google Drive and allow them to edit without messing up my template and messing up my Google Doc. So I can add this. Let's add a video to and we'll say, OK, find something on lesson planning. And so I'll say excellent. For perfect click and look strategy, <laughs> I picked the very first video. So I'll say, uh, please review video. Please review and complete unit plan. Um, and so here's assignment one. Here's all the materials. I can uh, schedule this thing. I can save it as a draft so I can have it pop up later. I can trash this if I want to. I'm going to hit assign. 
And now what it's going to do is it's going to place this in the sh in the sh uh, first off in the stream. So you notice this is over here in the stream. And then also in classwork, I have module one. I'm going to create a quiz also for module one. So I'm going to say uh, module one self-assessment. I'll say please complete and this will be an ungraded reflection the due date this will be due we'll make this due at three o'clock so when class is over so this is due at three o'clock this is also going to be module one and what I can do is I can click on that and it'll bring me over to Google Forms I love Google Forms I have other videos about Google Forms I will have new videos coming out soon um, but it'll take you over there so you can edit and create a form here. And what's also nice is it will automatically import those grades into Classroom. Um, so now I can either schedule this or, as before, I can assign it. So I'm going to assign this thing. I have uh, assignment one, the self-assessment, the quiz. I can also take a look here. Uh, there's a question. Sometimes I'll have an ungraded question. So I'll say, what do you think? I will make this ungraded as well. There'll be no due date. This will still be module one. I will give them a short answer. They can reply to each other. They can edit their answer. And I'll say, please watch the video and respond. And I'll say, oh, I could either go to Google Drive, but in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to YouTube and I'll say, um, uh, what was the video that we watched? Need a hero? That's not it. Just watched a video in class. It was thoughtful, thinking about teachers and education. And all right, every kid needs a champion. So we watched this and we talked about it in class to start off the semester. So I'll say, this is a question. Please watch the video and respond. This is ungraded. This is a prompt to get discussion started before we enter class. I will ask that question. So now I have these here. And what I can do is I can order these so I can move this up. So I can say, okay, before class, please watch and respond have assignment one due when you enter class and then this is due pretty much at the end of class like an exit ticket um, so this is module one altogether other things that we have in here i don't really reuse posts at all um, i uh, do share materials and i do mess around with topics a lot so what i can do is if i want to pre-populate this i can say okay let's also take a look at module two and we're going to create another topic, which will be module three. And so now what you can see is the students can see, all right, right now there's nothing to do for module two or module three. In my classes, they're about 13 weeks long. I will typically have uh, four modules. So I'll say module four, I usually have one or two weeks at the beginning to onboard students and then a week or two at the end for uh, review, revisions, presentations, stuff like that, loose ends. Um, and then in the middle of the class, I'll have two to three weeks, um, I'll have four modules, each lasting about two to three weeks. So students can see, okay, module two, three, and four are coming up. And I tell them you can expect the same type of assignments and the same type of links for each of those modules. So I'm chunking the content to make it understandable that, okay, there's a pretty steady TikTok or cadence of those modules so that you can know what to look forward to. So what I also do is here in classwork, I try to keep it organized because it can get unwieldy very quickly. If you start creating topics and you start saying, okay, you know, week one, uh, week two, week three, week four, the challenge is once you stack up 14 of these, to me, it's a little bit too much and it's hard to um, make sense of and keep track of. The other thing is, as you're populating this over in the stream, you have all of this stuff filling up. Um, you can see the upcoming assignments are here. You can see the stream is populating. We'll get to that in a minute. So while I stay in classwork, the last thing that I'll do before I bring students into the class, and once again, I haven't 
talked at at all about how I bring students in is I'll go to create and I'll make a topic for uh, class materials. And so this is sort of a holding uh, bin for any materials, any things um, that uh, they regular, regularly need to get to. So what I'm going to do is this module two, I'm going to uh, delete this because I don't want to, typically when my students enter the class at the beginning of the semester or the beginning of the year, I don't want a lot of clutter in here uh, to confuse them. Most uh, students have not really used Google Classroom ever. Um, they're apprehensive the, day, the first day of classes uh, in a face-to-face -face or an online class. So I try to keep things simple and only give them the, the initial pieces they need to work with. So a lot of times, um, and I'll show you an example in a current class, a lot of times I don't even give assignments at the beginning. I just get them into the classroom and get them uh, situated. So I'll have class materials, and I can, I can move this up, move it down. I can rename it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up. So this will be the first thing that they see up top, and I can keep this at the top throughout the semester. I'm going to go to, to create and I'm going to go to materials and I'll say syllabus and this will, will go into class materials. I'm going to go over to my Google Drive again and once again I have all of my course materials, syllabi, everything over in Google Drive. So I have this is for this class, all students. If I wanted to add it to other classes, I could. I don't want to do that. I can add a description if needed. I think by this point in their careers, they pretty much know what to do with the syllabus. It's added to class materials. Here's the document. So I'm going to hit post. So this is going to move that copy of the syllabus over. So now I have class materials, module one, assignments in module one. This is all populated once again over in the stream. So when I'm in classwork, what I love about it is I'm going to leave this here for now so you can see how it operates. But when a student comes across this, they can go in, they can view the syllabus. So this is going to open up this page. They can click. It'll open up a new tab so the students don't get lost. Here's the syllabus that they can review. But if they go back, there's always going to be questions about the syllabus. My mentality in my class is that I want students to try and figure it out on their own. Um, I use Google Docs so that they can add comments. I share it with comments so that they can leave feedback and question marks on the uh, syllabus so that they can check things out. But here, if they have a question that's for the good of the order, if other people might have it, they can ask that question here. So they can have a class comment about the syllabus, something they don't understand. What I tell them is that chances are if you have a question, there's other people that have that question as well. Ask it here. I empower my students who are pre-service teachers to also answer those questions. Um, and I leave my answers here as well so they can we can have a little bit of a discussion about the syllabus. And if you wanted to, some teachers like to have questions or a quiz about the syllabus, you could add that into this section as well. So if I go back, here's my class materials syllabus, the view material. When students come across this, they can uh, respond to the question. So this is what it looks like for the student. Uh, they can watch the video. It will embed the video right on top of Google Classroom. They can view my question. Let me go back to where I was. So they can view the question. And then for students, there is a way to respond. So for them, it will have a button that basically says, you know, do you want to respond to the question or answer the question now? And then I can go here. Once students start to answer, I can see their names and their responses. I can answer and assess all of the work here in Google Classroom. Works really well. So I can also go to assignment one. I can go uh, see the assignment, modify the assignment if needed view the assignment and I can give students feedback or go right to Google uh, Drive and change what they submit. I'll have more materials and more guidance on assessing work in Google Classroom at a later date. This is basically just getting you up and running. Um, and then here is what it looks like when they have a little quiz to take. They take the quiz. It opens up a new tab. All of their answers and responses and scores are pre-populated in Classroom. Um, so when I launch 
uh, Google Classroom with students, I will basically build it up to this point. And the truth of the matter is I will add the first day of classes, I will add uh, the syllabus, and pretty much that's it. I just want to get students into Google Classroom, figure out who they are, take attendance, let them know that I'm taking attendance, and give them the syllabus and talk a little bit about my expectations. In the upcoming days, the upcoming weeks, I will talk more about my expectations, the assignments, and slowly scaffold all of that. So I rarely share this much information, but I definitely share the syllabus. Um, I show them the stream, I show them classwork, and then how to get into the class. So what I'll do is in class, I'll show here I am, what students are involved. If you want to, you can add other teachers. You can add a, a teaching assistant or a co-teacher, add their email there. Um, I've only used that once or twice. I'll invite a colleague in or, or my grad student in to help out. What you can also do is if you want to, you can individually email and invite students. So if you have a student that's having a tough time getting into Google Classroom, uh, you can put their email in here and invite them right in. I prefer not to. Um, I'm working in higher ed. I also think it's appropriate for middle grades and high school. I think that students need to be able to open up a web browser, open up a new tab, go to classroom.google.com, log in with their credentials, um, and then basically in class I say, okay, go to Google Classroom, click on this little plus sign, hit join class. It's going to ask you for a class code. And I tell them that the class code is provided here in Google Classroom. So if I go to people, actually, let me go back to this. So I'll click on this in class. If I go to once again, so I'm in my class, I'll click on the little gear and I'll go down to class code. They have to add this class code to join. So this E Y Y R Y R I L that's the class code to get into this Google Classroom instance. And what's nice is I will copy paste that over in the learning management system or send it out via email. So say go to classroom.google, log in with your credentials, go, you know, after classroom.google, hit that plus sign, add this code. In class, I also repeat those directions, but I pull the code up. So if I go to display, this will pop up on the smart board on the projector and then students all can walk through it with me um, most times they uh, i want to see which of the students can figure it out and get logged in before class before i see them so it's a little bit of a hurdle to see who can figure out how to get into the classroom um, but most times the remainder students get into the class the first day face to face um, I can walk them through it as a class, but I think these are skills that students need to be able to have um, as they work in digital spaces. So as students add themselves, you can see the students populate here and see who's in the class. So I want to give you a look quickly uh, as this video is wrapping up at a current class. So this is a class that I've set up. Um, I only have a, a couple materials here. Um, this is a class that I already met the students face to face the first time. Um, and I pretty much did all of the things that I just suggested. So I started off the class. I had the stream. Uh, you'll notice that I have a link for hypothesis because we use that a lot in my class, a, a material link for the syllabus. And then I also have an extra link here for the course syllabus. And what I did is the first day, I didn't have anything here in classwork and I've added some course resources. You can see I don't even have any assignments here. Um, so what I'm going to and then in terms of people, I have a couple students already added to the section. So what I did is in class, I went in, uh, added all the students. So in class yesterday, I went to about and I said, OK, I want you to sign into Google uh, classroom.google.com, use the code, add yourself to the class. And so you can see a number of students were already successful adding themselves to the class. I also went in, I created a new topic called course resources. I added the syllabus for the course. Um, I can see that none of the students have questions right now so far about the syllabus. I also added 
uh, tomorrow in class, I'm going to talk a little bit about hypothesis and how to use hypothesis. So I'm basically making this available to them ahead of time. So here's hypothesis and the links in the videos that I created all ready for them to go. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the stream. And at this point, I have syllabus and I have syllabus again. I have two uh, links with the syllabus. And one of the things I want to do is I want to keep this area clean so it's not confusing to students. So I'm going to go in, edit this, delete it. It's going to remove that announcement. That's fine. Now when students come here, they'll see these two links. Um, when they go to classwork, they'll see uh, the two links, the one for hypothesis, and they'll see the link for uh, the syllabus. And I can move these up to the top, and I can keep this at the top as I add more things. Um, so once again, this is uh, Google Classroom. This is the primary tool that I use to organize my students. Um, I use this for handing out and collecting assignments. This doesn't really do a good job for class discussions. That's one of my uh, the things I don't like about Google Classroom, but I use other tools for that. I use it for handing out assignments, keeping students aware, sending out uh, uh, announcements for class, sending out class materials. I'll share more throughout the semester on how I use it. But this video is pretty much just getting you up and running with Google Classroom. Future videos will talk about sharing slide decks, sharing course materials, sharing and assessing, um, you know, student work, giving feedback, that sort of stuff. But this is just an overview to get us started. So hopefully you enjoy this. Um, by all means, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you thumbs down if you hated the video. Uh, give me questions if there's something that I mumbled my way through. And hopefully this was of value to you. Uh, thanks a ton.